All right, so um, uh, first of all, I, mean, I think that it's, it's, it's speed has gotten a lot better over the course of the last few years. Um, the, uh, I, I wear this reloading data shirt, but actually the reloading data step is hardly where it spends any time. Um, the part of the reason why is I have, I have, I have, I have on occasion just would take a month. Like there was one, I was thinking about a one month a year where I was just going through and rewriting large sections of the app to manage memory in a way that did not involve tiny little allocations. Um, I went through. Uh, one of the fastest key value stores in the world is actually invented inside a city, and it's called Store. Um, the Gemini S like script. <laughs> and, but it is, it is, it is, it is a, it, you can't delete data from it, so it, it doesn't have, like, there's no point in like, thinking about it versus level DD. And it can only store up to a certain number of things before it starts slowing down, like the same number of things that apps can store before it explodes. Um, so it was very specific. We designed key value store that's highly reliable, right? and not even contains. Um, and it's used for all the metadata now, the CPS stores, the relation packages, so that can be used. Um, the slowest step currently is that not the reloading data step, but it is the um, uh, downloading packages step. And, and honestly, that is slow for the majority of users because they have like 40 packages installed. And what Cydia is, is a model where it has to connect to 40 servers, download all that data, and all the servers are run by people who don't really know much about certain servers, and merges all the data. And the reason why it does that is he has a very open system that believes that everyone should be able to do everything that they want to be able to do, and there should be no centralized control, there certainly should be no central jurisdiction. Um, so if you are in a country that, for instance, does things that I'm not allowed to even think about doing, you are allowed to use Sadia to do that as long as, as long as I don't know, as long as nobody else knows. It all happens locally on the device, which of course then causes other problems. And we're talking about now tens of thousands of packages, data items, that need to be downloaded and indexed and updated device for rapid searching, a lot of devices we deal with don't have enough memory to really handle, like you're not going to build a giant like a Google style index of all the data, with all the tiny pieces of data, you don't even want to dump all that on your phone. Um, so a lot of it you don't get until you click it, so there's a lot of complaints about that. Um, I, with the default repositories for a long time, it was very unfortunate that you know, they didn't have all the little things set up, we finally have that nine I think nailed down, right? they all have big index support now, so when Cydia wants you to download an update, they don't download the whole thing. If you have a large non-default repository, you probably don't have Divin to set up, right? You set up Divin, little apps that you jump on, you can be able to truly understand that they have to be proud. It's like, it's not city specific, it's, it's a general thing. Um, then, um, clicking on things, some people click on things, and they're like, oh, that was slow, I clicked on something. But there's a lot of time spent there downloading information then from the web page of this thing. I, I think it's really useful and flexible to have all of this support for um, uh, extended depiction. Some companies use this really well. Um, actually, I mean, some, some users, some individuals, I mean, Ryan Patrick has some beautiful depictions that have all the types of support and documentation. Uh, Intelliborn has depictions that, that describe how to use the product and where it goes. You can go through the depiction and you can get access to the full support system and like they actually have to support the tracker and yada yada yada. Um, so people use this effectively. Uh, some of them have like little videos you can see where you can then um, watch how the, how the um, extension works. However, some people, I mean, they have a really slow server for some of this stuff. They don't have to use the server. They could embed the information in the package. So you really supports that. Um, but they just they chose not to. And so I don't really feel it's my place to demand that they don't do that. If they would, I mean, I would, I mean, maybe they'd be better at it. Um, some, some repositories, and I don't, I'm not complaining about this, I mean, Boss, for example, is not the most secure. It has a bunch of ads in it. Sometimes the ads can be slow. But the ads then are what pay for all of this time for people like Optimo to be using and trying all of these extensions. I'm always impressed by the amount of testing he actually does do on these like, random that end up in the ecosystem, um, verifying that the packages are packaged correctly and all of this work. And, and that's all that's all paid for by those ads. And so it's all sort of really concerning that people are like, oh, so you should have no ads. Um, but some people blame me, I don't get any money for the ads. Um, then they'll say, well, city should have the ads anyway. It's like they, they, they're telling all these people and then we like, where's the money going to get from them? I don't think it's a huge, huge complicated problem. Um, ugly. Um, honestly, I would say that uh, the um, there are various sections of Cydia, and I think that when you actually ask people what is so ugly about Cydia, they all point at something that I don't really control, which is the package details page. They point at a bunch of broken layouts on depictions and things. There are a couple of things about the package details layout itself that I, I always try to get around to improve it. So mostly, you just get rid of things that I have control over. My, my, my primary mission is to control less of the UI. Um, because of this, I end up in some awkward positions. The theme center is an interesting awkward position. Uh, the goal of the theme center, in a way, was to make it so that when you click on a theme, instead of getting a beauty 
really slow ad donated page that had no screenshots, you got a page that had an automated screenshot. I don't like Hello Kitty Center very much because the screenshots aren't always that accurate and some of the people are complaining, but all I want them to do is make a better depiction. My plea to the community is to spend more time thinking about marketing the things you build, spend more time thinking about the users that are using those things. I would absolutely love it if when I looked at a theme in Sevilla, the page for it made me feel like that theme. It, it, the, the theme artists sometimes they can mobile optimize beautiful wallpaper web pages, and yet somehow they're not spending the time to, 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 to customize their depiction, even though um, they're, they're, they're making a living off of it sometimes. Even though Mod My Eye and Big Boss will both provide that functionality to pay packages, possibly for a cost, but the cost is tiny in comparison to the increased, um, uh, what do you call it, in comparison to the increased um, uh, conversion rate that you get. And if you do that, we're captains of the theme center, I'll add a my face. I don't actually want to stick with that image station. I really would like to just go directly to your depiction. I just, I just can't because the users really want a screenshot. Really want a screenshot. <laughs> um, and I've tried my best to give them that screenshot. So. Does that answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right.